What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe and Michael Fugue. Yeah, yeah. What what town was it? You're in So 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 So, so Mississippi. So So Mississippi. Leave a comment below if you've ever even been to So So Mississippi. You're gonna be flooded. You ain't even gonna have enough. It's gonna Is ding. there even a gas station your, there? You're gonna have to cut your phone on silent because it's gonna ding all the time. Is there a gas station in the town? There is. Short stop. Shout out to the short stop. We are gonna show y'all a little bit on how we caught these, but we went on a recon mission last night, yesterday evening really, up to Lake Garcia in Vero Beach, Florida, because we love eating crappie as much as any fish there is. But typically we only catch them in Lake Okeechobee during the winter time. A lot of people do catch them, um, you know, in some spillways during the summer where water's flowing, but we went last night, took my duck boat, which I'm gonna give you a run through in a minute, we took some minnows and some jigs and we just went scouting and look what we caught. The cool thing is though, we ended up catching these big bluegills, which that was the last thing I was expecting to catch. We actually caught more of them during the day than we did crappie. Then we turned on my outrigger lights on my boat and <laughs> you see what we did. We actually tore up the uh, crappie at night. We caught some catfish. We're gonna do a really cool cooking video, plus showing you my gear. Plus we'll show you some of this footage and we're gonna see what tastes better, catfish, crappie, or bluegill. And that's about a redneck freshwater fishing slam. Hold that catfish up real quick. Look at that. So Which, I, I hold noticed, one of them catfish I up. I noticed one thing. Huh? You don't, we're gonna fry these, correct? Yeah. You've got the wrong tools. Why? No spoon. Yeah, but I don't like scaling with a spoon. You guys. <sighs> Ask all those Cajuns. Ask all the Mississippians some spoons. You know what's funny is the first time I saw Gabe descale fish was with a spoon. Yeah, so. I use a spoon, but I, I, those uh, knives to me work better. Fans. So we're gonna start out scaling some. We're gonna cook them whole, but I gotta put some of them on ice so we got room. One thing you'll learn about Michael Fugue is he loves fish, I think more than anybody. That is true. More than me? Yeah, but Michael will eat a minnow out of a ditch. Oh That's true. yeah. Kelly's a little bit picky. Maybe. All right. You starting with a crappie, I'm gonna start with a bluegill. We're just scaling them just like this. Now, typically I would do this in the kitchen, but Kelly spent all day yesterday cleaning. I ain't got it in me to go do that. I will Why would say- Why you ever descale a fish in the kitchen? Well, I mean- I do it all the time. Yeah, it's air conditioning. That's oh. right. Plus, my good friend Mike and Marcy, they're up in Georgia right now doing food plots. They give me a hard time all the time for doing that. Did you even look in the back of my truck on what I got you? No, I'm gonna surprise everybody and they'll see it when I see it. It's nothing crazy. So see, this knife works to me just as good as a spoon. It's a, just a blunt edge, sort of butter knife slash steak knife. I get way up there on the head. Make sure you get behind the tail. My grandpa would be mad. <laughs> Dude, you one scale off. left behind will ruin a piece of fish to me. Yeah, I've done that before. It's rain and scales. It will be. Hallelujah. So let's get to fishing a little bit. We were using minnows on just a cork and a bobber with some of my old salties. We power pulled down sideways. The one reason we didn't film yesterday was, well, there are two reasons. We didn't know if we would catch anything. And the second reason was the wind was absolutely honking. So Michael was sitting up front. I was sitting sort of in the back behind the camera. And we did, we caught a bunch of these bluegills. And as it started to get close to dark, we did pick up a few nice crappie. Unfortunately, I didn't film any after dark. I wish I would have because I wanted to show you what my boat looks like at night with those lights, but I've got so many fish gigging videos that you, if you follow me, you already see. And if you don't, if this is your first video, check my channel out and go to any of my fish gigging videos and you'll see how bright my lights are. So he scaled. Babe, you're sitting in a perfect spot. Uh-uh. Get out of here. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. I, I forgot you were standing there. I'm returning yeah. your gift. Yeah, hold on. Let me move. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> you might be in a dangerous spot. So me, myself, personally, I like to flay them, skin them, and then save the backbones and the tails because the tails, to me, yes. are the best part. But the I don't tails. particularly like eating them whole like that. The way I do it, you still use the entire fish. You just do it in steps. All right, we're gonna finish these fish up. When we're done, I'm gonna show you the boat and I'm also gonna show you this awesome new vehicle that Michael built. He's one of them builders. He'll build anything, a house, a motorcycle, 
he built some alien looking vehicle over there. I'm oh, going to show you in now. a minute. Come on now, that's my tilt. All right, we're going to give you a quick gear rundown. Now this is my 1850 Pro Drive with outrigger lights. And the reason I've mentioned these lights is you see how small they are. I have some that are white and then some that are yellow. You turn the yellow on when the water's dirty and the white on when it's clear. Now last night when we caught the big majority of those fish, we were fishing at night. Michael was up front, I was power pulled down to where the bow of the boat was out over the hydrilla. We had two rigs, a little pink jig head with some 10 pound fluorocarbon and a slip bobber. Where'd the other rod go? You done put uh, it away? Put it in. Oh. He thinks we're going fishing. I said, we're doing a gear rundown and he puts the fishing pole away. Well, this I'm boat's always, also got always some- cleaning we, stuff up. Here, this boat's got some cool gear storage too. So this is what we call a crappie hook, little split shot and a sliding bobber. This is mainly what I caught the most on, but then about 10 o'clock at night, they switched over and wanted to eat the jig. So this boat to me, when I had it built and designed with KP at Pro Drive, I put a 80 pound thrust iPilot trolling motor. I've got Sea Deck that Castaway Customs put on. I've got a storage locker, a rod locker. Now those right there are pegs. They're for like, you know, power pulling yourself down. You stick them in the front. I also have power poles, which to me are the best invention ever put on a boat. Guess what? Huh? To the power pole. Sebastian video? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So Michael and I did a video about five months ago and legit these power poles possibly saved our life. We were fishing in Sebastian Inlet getting sucked out by the current. We had two monster bull reds on and we were like 30 feet from the breakers where we would have 100,000% sunk, sank, sunk, however you want to say it. And I was able to get over to shallow enough water right as we almost hit the breakers and I put the power poles down and they kept us from getting sucked out because the iPilot could not hold us. It couldn't keep up with the current. So the motor's a 40 horse pro drive as well. Outrigger lights, Makota trolling motor, Castaway Customs. These Millennium seats, which are absolutely awesome. That's it. That's the full rundown of the boat. We are going to go back and do a full-fledged crappie and bluegill video from start to finish and show you guys exactly how we did it. This video we just put together to give you all something to watch in the meantime. So let's go show them the alien vehicle. Voila! So I needed a rig to pull my boat. Um, if I ever wanted to go to the Keys or freshwater fishing or whatever, if you wanted to stay at an overnight state park, there's no water in it. Why do you put water? What if I wanted to shower? Well, then I could do that. So it's got a 30 gallon water tank, uh, propane, two, two propane burner. That's what uh, we need right there. This is so if Lauren kicks you out of the house, well, don't that's, lie. That's true too. You got, got somewhere to go. Queen bed set up. I'm going to have a uh, full solar to lithium batteries, the conversion. Uh, like I said, it's got a queen bed in the back. There should be nothing in those because I don't, we're not going camping. Um, but this is an E350 one ton and it, the suspension was beefed up because of this nap hide service body. It was an old irrigation truck. It was sitting out there and I said, you know what, I'm gonna do something with it. So I put backup cameras on it, put a hitch on it, 16,000 pound hitch, custom bumper. Um, I have a 10,000 BTU air conditioner on the other side, as well as a ladder rack that I designed, which is, nobody's ever seen it before, but the most comments I get is about that bumper. Mm -hmm. Do people reason. often think you might be able to like kidnap them or something if you pull up in the parking lot? That, Kids true. probably run. Well, I can tell you when I hit the light bars, I can light up like a football field. So, we uh, need something like this, Kelly. Yeah. It's, you going to build it, babe? No, I'm not a builder. I am absolutely 100% not a builder of any kind, shape or form. But what I can build is a good dinner. Let's get inside and cook. Let's do it. So while... We were out there cleaning fish. My new manager called and I had to get on the phone with her. Michael went ahead and cut the head off and removed the guts. So we've got the whole fish in the tail. There's the old catfish. There's the bluegill. We are ready. Michael taught me or told me about something today that I've never tried and I'm gonna let him go ahead and do it. And then I'll start cooking. So being from Mississippi, we eat a lot of fried fish. We eat a lot of- So, so Mississippi. Yeah, well, uh... <laughs> So we eat a lot of fried fish and I had a Cajun guy tell me one time to, especially if you're 
eating fish on the bone. Um, to coat them in yellow mustard, it takes out all the fish flavor almost immediately. This, I've tried it with a filleted fish. I wouldn't recommend this me method, but with fish on the bone, this is the way to do it. So, what you do, you just get your yellow mustard. It doesn't have to be crazy thick. Just put it on there, and you're gonna get your hands dirty. Do you need my wire glove? Nope. You think I should? Let's show them my scar. They haven't seen my scar lately. Look at that. Mm. It's, it's only it's only sore right there. Shark bite. Hoo ha ha. So you're really rubbing it in there. Yeah. Get down in these score marks. That's what the score is going to do is allow it to cook evenly. Without that on there, it's going to. What is the score mark for us? Uh, you score it. So that way when the oil goes down in there, you can pull this whole little section off if you want to. It's going to cook the fish quicker and more evenly. How long you been fishing for crappie? Let's see, I'm 40 years old, so my, I'd say 35 years probably. My grandpa and my daddy, that's all they cared about doing. Literally growing up for us here in Florida, we live right next to the Atlantic Ocean. Catch every kind of fish you could imagine. I would rather do what we did last night, that and jigging for crappie or fishing for bluegills on the beds than any other fishing there is. To me, it's just like, we sat out there last night. We were only planning on going until dark and we ended up fishing until probably, what? 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock and just had the time of our life. It actually started getting cold. It was 72 degrees. Mm -hmm. my, my sleeve was wet from reaching in there getting minnows. Now the minnows that we use are called Missouri minnows and here in Florida, Kelly's laughing right now because I say minnows. <laughs> minnows. 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 The minnows are from, they're called Missouri minnows. They're a farm raised minnow that if they do end up back in our ecosystem, they can't breed and they'll die. So I did catch more on minnows, but I caught a bunch on that pink jig head tipped with a minnow. I want to take Kelly back and Luke and do that now that we're sort of figuring out kinda a pattern. Kind of know where they're at. The seasoning I'm going to use, we're throwing it back to Texas. So this is the company. Queuing it up, barbecue done right. They're coming out with a seafood seasoning that they give us, and it might already be out, and it's actually really, really good. That's what we're going to season them with. You want to put it in the flour as well? Mm-hmm. I don't really ever season my flour. I always Ooh, just season the fish. That's a mistake, sir. Unless you're into pan fishing, you don't really get it. Like to me, if you said go do something tonight that's as like that will just free your brain, it would be doing what we did last night. You may tell you what it's all worth it for. Hmm. Is that right there? Oh, the tails. People, do y'all even know about these tails? You're gonna know. So in this bowl, I've just got all-purpose flour and cornmeal. I like doing it by hand so I can get. It. I spread the tails out. Spread the fins out, get it in all the cracks. That right there is going to be fit to eat. So your opinion, which one do you think is going to be the best? Crappie. I think you're going to be wrong. I'm telling you guys, we have black crappie here in South Florida. So a humongous black crappie would be like uh, two and a half to almost three pounds. I've personally never seen one three pounds. In Okeechobee, they have a tournament every year, and it's each week the biggest fish wins. And I don't think we've ever had a three-pounder on Okeechobee or any of these little lakes weighed in. But these fish right here are quality. And we didn't catch but one throwbacker, and he was actually a keeper. All of them were almost exactly the same size. All right, we got one of each. We got the redneck slam, bluegill catfish, and crappie. You can't go wrong with some bluegill, let me just tell you that. Now, earlier I talked about taking Kelly and Luke to do this. The reason I didn't mention Jake is Jake is obsessed with bass fishing. And if you saw my last bass fishing video, that's where it was, Lake Garcia. I'm going to take him back up there because last night, it's done right at dark. So first I'm going to roll a clip real quick of us crappie fishing, sort of ending the day. And once that's done and you see me holding that bass, just know that so like right at black dark, as far as I could throw that popping frog, there was a gap in the hydrilla about maybe that wide. Right, back up, because you said, I think the top water bites up. Yeah, I think it's too dark, and I winged that popping frog, and it come across, and when it got right to the edge, 
this giant fish eats. Y'all watch this. Y'all, I tell you what, if you don't like fishing, I don't know what to tell you. Me and Michael are out here. We've all, both of us have caught so many big fish in our life and we're sitting out here with some jigs. That's right. Some minnows. And we're having the time of our life. I just caught that. Oh, look at that gator right there. Oh, that's a big one. I mean, my minnow back there has been out for 10 minutes and hasn't got touched. Right there. Look at that. Man, that dude was mad. <laughs> well, you'd be mad too if I snatched you out of the water. Look right here. Look right here. What do we got here? Oh! Oh, you're all up in your line. Crappie are starting to turn on. Right out there. Look at there. Look at there. How far out? Look at there. Ooh, that's Ooh, a stud. Slab daddy. Okay. Slab daddy. On the white. That's what I caught this one on. It's, it's, it's almost like they're out Ooh. where that ripple is. You guys, leave a comment below and tell me what's your favorite type of fishing for freshwater. Walleye, bluegill, sockelet, I want to know what your favorite one is. My buddy Adam that's been in a bunch of my videos, he told me to swim the jig and that's what I did the last two casts and I had pretty good bites. But it's just a habit to want to tick a jig like that. Oh, oh son, look at that, look at that. Oh, biggin. Oh, biggin. Oh, we are in the meat now, boys and girls. So how far out there are they? Just throwing a white and pink bass assassin jig rubber body just like that Michael I can't tell you all my secrets uh -huh. you guys we're getting ready to leave I said it's too late to throw a frog but let me just try one time look at that big old slab daddy my son Jake would be pissed if he was <laughs> if, he, if I was to send him this picture right now turn it loose literally way too late to be bass fishing and that fish crushed it right at the bitter end i wish i could bring this home and put it in jake's pond see you later girl what a way to end the day cooler full of crappie and one big old bass are you hungry michael sorry he gets hangry he's Bad. one of them people Bad. that gets hangry oh, We're my wife will testify to that for sure if we're out fishing and he gets hungry, it's like, all right, it's time to go in. We got some grits cooking. We're going to make some green beans. I would make some cornbread, but Kelly takes it and eats it all on her own. Like, literally, she will not let anybody else have cornbread. Over in the corner. Check out my crib, how clean it is right now. But if you're missing something, there used to be a tank here that had my blue crab in it. We got rid of that because he died. Got my turkey fans. Hey, shout out all you turkey hunters. <laughs> Look at that. This was the turkey I killed this year in Nebraska, and those are uh, prickly bears that were in his beard. I actually shot that turkey at like four feet. Our good buddy Tanner in Nebraska, who's now one of our really good friends, filmed me, and the angle that I was at, it looks like I was in the wide open with him, but I'm actually in like an old dugout hole. Destiny. Let's go see what Kelly got me. You never know with her. It could be PG, it could be rated R, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. It's nothing crazy. I just saw it at Walmart and I'm like, might as well pick up a few bags. Where did Redneck go? I don't know. Redneck likes to wander the neighborhood. Hey. <laughs> what an odd thing to get me. <laughs> well, we got some deer corn, y'all. I could only get two bags because it was kind of heavy. I was expecting something cool something to well this is cool because a hog or deer might not think it's cool when he gets shot off of it but to me it's something <laughs> useful useful that's what you like yeah see i you... would much rather deer corn than something i wouldn't use so you did good babe high five all right let's get this party started there's your crappie here's my crappie here's your catfish are you gonna be able to eat all this i'm gonna tell you something my tape aren't fixing to go crazy <laughs> You guys, here's the one and only best part. My 
potato chips. Mm. If you've never ate a fried fish tail, my mouth's water. You're missing out. And it's not just the tail either, it's these bottom pins that are good too. Mm. I'm gonna try the catfish first. Catfish is good, but it ain't no bluegill. Look at that fin right there. When you pull it, the bones come out. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, catfish can't even touch bluegill. Mm -mm. So, would, which one? Right have now. You have you tasted them all? Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, dude, crap. Not bluegill. Mike already has his answer. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. It's clear. It ain't even close. Oh, you already tried all three? Well, yeah. What we'll you waiting on? He was eating fins. <laughs> yeah. Crappie all day long. Wrong. <laughs> what one? Bluegill. On the bone. If you fillet the bluegill, the crappie will beat it all day, every day. You watch. Mm mm. Got crappie. Tell them a comment. Tell them a comment. Y'all real... leave a comment below and tell me what's your favorite of the three. Fried on the bone. Because I just tasted all three of them. Catfish is not even close. Now these yeah. aren't. Yeah, catfish ain't even. It ain't even the same leaf. But I think a catfish in Kentucky in a river or somewhere where the water, where there's not so much mud on the bottom might be better. These are just old mud cats that lived in the bottom of yeah. a muddy lake. Flowing the, water, they would be a lot better. Yeah, the Channel blue, cat's way better than... The bluegill's good, but it ain't crappie. Okay. Everybody's entitled to be wrong. <laughs> now, even the crappie's fins are better to me because they're bigger. They are better. But... Now, yeah. listen. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that you're forgetting. What do you get when you get the whole so-so cheerleading team together in one room? <laughs> About six people. A full set of teeth. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I do kind of like that. You guys, I love everybody in Mississippi, Alabama. Don't think, don't take that personally. Like those are some of my favorite people in the world. Kentucky, like literally, I love everybody. We just are joking around here, so don't don't get all. all right, you're gonna get burned. Don't get sensitive on that. Now, here's what I'm about to tell you. There's three of us. Only two of us have casted our votes thus far. Okay, we need a tiebreaker? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. This is crappie? No. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's crappie. Yes. Holy mackerel. <clears throat> that jalapeno is hot. All right, let me try it again. Babe, you got to pick that thing up and eat it like corn on the cob. All right, that's crappie. Michael, eat one of them fried jalapenos. Yeah, it's good. Food are hot. Mm-mm. Which one? Bluegill. Are you but, even tasting it over there? You're eating it so fast? Well, I ain't ate since three o'clock yesterday. You done said I get hangry. Hangry. All right, y'all, thanks for watching this video. We are definitely gonna go back and do a full scale. It's not, what is it, fall now? Yeah, it's fall, right? It's the um, beginning of fall. Te technically. Technically fall. So our crappie on Okeechobee will start to bite late October. Right now we're in late September, so it's a little early. We're gonna go back to Garcia and do a full video on how we did this and do it at night too and film some of the nighttime footage. Right now though, this video's ending. I gotta eat the food, do the dishes, and edit. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button so when I upload, you get the notification right away. But like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape.